Hello everybody, Comte here with another video. How to use the transform tool in the cut window of DaVinci Resolve 16.2. Your cut window tab will appear to the left of your edit tab at the bottom of your DaVinci Resolve interface. Left click once to select this. Press Ctrl and I to open up a file explorer to select the video or image files that you wish to use in this tutorial. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. Inside the master bin in your media pool, left click on the thumbnail of the media file that you have inserted into this project. With the media file selected, go to left click once on the append button which appears underneath the master bin. and your media file should appear on your project timeline. Go to left click on the tools button. A set of properties should appear underneath your preview window which can't be selected. These should appear underneath the transform tool which appears right under the preview screen. To make these parameters modifiable, simply left click on the edit which appears on the timeline in your cut window that you wish to change. A red outline should appear around the edit that you have left clicked on. Now the transform tool properties should now be highlighted in a lighter colour underneath your preview screen. The first box to the left with a red circle indicates that a transform setting is applied to this edit. If we left click in this box, the circle shifts to the left and turns grey and the properties to the right are no longer modifiable. I'm going to left click on this box again to make these properties selectable. This first tool will ensure that transform settings are applied or not to your edit. The first property zoom width determines the horizontal size of your image or video file. The default value is 1. If we were to increase this by left clicking holding our mouse button down on the number and dragging this to the right. We can see that the width increases as well as the height of the image. The reason why both these properties update simultaneously is because the padlock symbol in between these properties is selected. And the second property zoom height determines the vertical size of your image or video file. If I only wanted to edit just one of these properties, I can left click on the padlock symbol in between the two properties. This will initially appear as a locked padlock and after left clicking on this once this should now convert to an unlocked padlock symbol. If I reduce the zoom height now by double clicking instead of using my mouse cursor and typing a number in manually, I'm going to reduce the height to 0.75. Press enter when you're done. And as we can see on the preview window, the vertical size of the image file has decreased. To reset the size of your image or video file at any time, you can hover your mouse cursor over the property box, drag your mouse cursor to the left side, and you should see a rotated arrow icon appearing to the left. If you left click on this once, the property value is reset to its default number. I'm going to do the same with the zoom width. Position X enables the DaVinci Resolve user to modify the horizontal positioning of the image or video file on their canvas. If I increase this number from 0 to 315 for example, we can see that the image has shifted to the right. If we change this value to a negative number, such as minus 834, we can see that the image has shifted to the left instead. And position Y enables you to shift the image or video file vertically. A number higher than zero will shift the image or video file upwards. And a negative value will shift the image or video file downwards. Rotation angle makes use of the central white circle which you can see appearing in your image or video file on screen here. At present the white circle is located in the middle of the screen. If the number inside the rotation angle box were to be increased, 
the image rotates anti-clockwise. A number less than zero will rotate the image clockwise. If I left click on and drag the central circle to the bottom left corner of my squares JPEG file here on my preview screen, the point of rotation will now be in the bottom left side of my canvas. And as we can also see, a line is connecting this particular big circle to a smaller circle above. If I left click on this smaller circle and drag my mouse cursor to the right, we can use this as a method of rotating the image or video file that we have in our project. The value also updates in the rotation angle box below. This big circle can be dragged back to the middle using your mouse or by pressing Ctrl and Z on your keyboard to undo. The next property, Pitch, enables the image or video file to be rotated by its horizontal axes, the right and left side. So for example, if I increase this, a three-dimensional effect appears with my image file as the top of the image appears to have rotated outwards, whereas the bottom part of the image seems to be coming towards the viewer. Again, like with previous properties, a negative value will apply the opposite effect to this particular part of your image or video file. And the YAL property on the right enables the image or video file to be rotated by its vertical axis instead. The next tool to the right is the Flip Horizontal tool, which applies a mirror reflection effect to your image or video file just as the subsequent Flip Vertical tool does. Finally, on the right, should you wish to reset all properties to their default values, left click on Reset All in the bottom right corner. This will also reconnect the two zoom tools that we looked at initially. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.